So today you guys are going to start learning to write equations in point-slope form. You guys already know how to write equations in slope-intercept form. Almost all of you guys that, I think it was question number eight on the test that you had to write the equation of the line before you did the inverse, had that one correct for the most part. Maybe one person, you know, in each class got it wrong. So you guys understand slope-intercept form. So today our goal is just to focus on point-slope form, and we're not going to change it to slope-intercept form yet. Monday we'll start changing it to slope-intercept form, but just getting that idea of point-slope form down. Because it's can't really use slope-intercept form if you're given two points is what we're going to see here, or without a slope or anything like that. All right, so point-slope form. We can write the equation of a line using the slope and any point that goes through the line by using what is called point-slope form. You know what that is. There was one on the test you, some of you graphed from it, some of you put it in slope-intercept form. It does not matter what you did with that. But you guys have seen point-slope form before. This is not a new form for you. So you will use this formula anytime you need to find the equation of a line and you know the slope and a point that goes through it. The only time you won't need it is when you're given the y-intercept and the slope because you can put it in slope-intercept form. But if you're not given the y-intercept, then you're going to definitely need to use point slope form. So if you aren't given the y-intercept, you must use point slope form. Okay, so what do we know from point slope form, which is y minus y1 equals m times the quantity x minus x1? Tell me something you know about this formula. What do we remember? Kelly? Your point will be in order. In what order? Um, what it's not y1 comma x1, is it? Oh, like x1 comma y1. Yeah, because you got to make sure x always comes first, right? Alphabetically there. What's the other thing you guys know in here? Sarah? The y1 and x1, like, they're always going to be opposite. Yeah, and so we're going to see that a little bit easier with plugging into the equations. We learned that when we took them out, they were opposites, right? So we'll see why that's the case more when we plug it in. So that is a really good point to make, and I hope that you guys will see it, maybe make that connection a little bit better now. What's another thing you guys remember? Sarah? We use the slope. M is the slope still. So it's important to understand all of your pieces before we move on and use it. All right, so whenever you're ready, you can flip to the next page. At the top of your page for those examples, write the point slope formula, maybe write above the word examples, so that you know what formula form you're plugging into. Okay, so I'm going to write it up there too. It's good, and even on your homework assignment, it might be helpful to have this written down so you guys remember what the form formula is that you're plugging into. So that's what we're going to be plugging into. So the first example there says, write the equation of a line, given the slope is 2, and it goes to the point negative 1, 3. So again, we're using this form, point slope. How can I plug into that? What is something I know from that paragraph? Carly, give me something I know from that paragraph. M is 2. What's something else I know? Olivia, what's something else I know? So x1 comma y1 equals negative 1 comma Great. So then we just get to substitute those in. So I get y minus y1 is a positive 3 equals m, which we have as 2, times x minus, and then this is x1 for negative 1, so it's x minus a negative 1. 
What do you guys know about minus a negative? Sarah? How come you don't have to change like I am about to change. You don't have to change it because the negative is going to change the sign for you. So like this sign is going to change. So it was positive here and now it's negative. negative so it was changed. Yeah. And this is negative here, but two negatives make a. So isn't it going to change there too? So the subtraction sign kind of does it for you. It's when you take it out that you have to change the signs because you don't have that subtraction sign doing it for you. So that just becomes plus there. So minus a negative becomes addition. The next one there, and again, we're not changing it to slope-intercept form today. We'll do that on Monday, so you get to leave it like this. Technically, you could leave it like this in any situation because they're equivalent equations, whether it's in point slope or slope-intercept, as long as you're solving it correctly, okay? Okay, so Vivian, you're going to help me with the next one. Write the equation of the line whose slope is one-fourth, and the line goes through the point negative four, negative three. Tell me some stuff you know. The slope is one-fourth, okay? What else do you know, Vivian? Good. So, Morgan, help me try to plug that into my formula then. And I'm going to just write it like this so we see why. That's the case, but you're not incorrect at all. You can go straight to plus 3 if you can see that. That's fine. Continue, Morgan. And what does minus negative 4 become? Good. So we get y plus 3 equals 1 fourth times x plus 4. All right. So look over the first two examples we just did there and see what questions you guys have for me at this point. See what questions you guys have for me at this point. So let's look at the next example there. Your next example is a line that's already been graphed. You could easily put that into slope-intercept form, right? Because you know the y-intercept and you can figure out the slope from the graph. Am I correct there? Alvin, you need me to go back. There you go. Let me know when you're ready. So you could easily put that next one into slope-intercept form, but today's focus is putting it in point-slope form. So I'm actually going to have a few different um, equations that we can write here. What could happen in every single one of these problems, especially the ones on the graph or tables, is that all 20 of you could have a different <coughs> point-slope equation. You all could have a different one because it's any point along the line. Whereas slope-intercept form is a little bit stricter, so you have to have that y-intercept, but point-slope lets you have any point on that line. So one of the first things we're going to do when you're given a graph is find that slope. So Alex, how could I find that slope? Okay, so what did you say to do? Okay, so what do you notice about those two points? So you see, but oh, you can do it that way, up to over 4, but it's going over 4 in the negative direction, so that would be negative 4, right? So which one goes over the other one here, Alex? So it's 2 over negative 4, which simplifies to what? negative one half. So our slope is negative one half. We are going to put this into point slope form. So then you're going to choose a point from your graph.
Alexis, give me a point that's on this line. Two four. Two four is a point on this line. Okay, so using the point. Two comma four. Are you going to answer my question that I'm about to ask, or do you have a question? Did I look at it wrong? No, it's two. It's this point here she's looking at. Do you see it? Because that's not an actual point on the graph. Yeah. So using that point, there, let's write an equation. So Avery. What would the point slope form be equation with our slope of negative one half and the point two comma four? Perfect. So that your y one is four equals what? Negative one half is our slope, good, times what? It's not plus two because we have the subtraction sign there, so it's x minus a positive two, which just stays minus two. Do you see that? So it's a little bit different, kind of like the question Sarah asked earlier about why aren't you changing the signs. Like when we took it out, we changed the signs, but since we're plugging it in, the negative sign already does it for us. So that's why that, we're not doing that. Let's do another one. Let's see here. Who wants to choose another point on this graph? Somebody choose another point on this graph. Jenny, how about you? Choose a point on this graph. Um, negative two, negative two. Negative two. There you go. Okay, Kaylin. With the point negative two comma positive six, what would your equation have been? Yeah, because you do minus a negative 2, so that becomes plus 2. Very good. So I would accept either of these answers plus a multitude of other answers, all right? If you were to solve these for y, they would give you the same slope-intercept form equation. They would still give you the same equation. That's why they're the same. They're just, you know, different points along your line. So again, when you're given a graph, do not have a panic attack if you and your friend have a different answer for that because it's okay, especially in a lot of point slope form instances. All right, whenever you're ready, flip to the next slide. So we have some special cases here. So write the equation of the line that goes through the given point with the given slope. So this first one is a 4 comma 3 with a slope of 0. What should you guys be thinking when you see something like that? What should you guys be thinking? Mackenzie? So Mackenzie said 0 slope means it's a horizontal line. So, if you think about this, if I plot the point 4, 3, wouldn't there be a horizontal line that goes through that? So what kind of equation is always written when it's a horizontal line? What kind of equation is always written with a horizontal line? So this point is 4, 3. This is 0, 3. We'll call this negative 2, 3. What do you notice is happening each time? Which one of those values is repeating? Three and three is in which position, Alexis? 
x or y? y. So what kind of equation is it going to be then if it's repeating in the y? Think about that. Which one will it be then? Repeating in the y means it will be a... Katie? Okay, let's do it this way then. Let's put it into point slope form. We cannot figure that out, which is fine. Let's put it in point slope form. The reason you need to know how to do this is you can't put a non-defined slope into an equation. So you'd have y minus 3 equals 0 times x minus 4, right? What's 0 times anything? Isn't that just y equals 3, negative 3, sorry, or positive 3? Isn't that all that is? Y is repeating each time, so whenever you have a horizontal line, it is a y equals equation. And it's whatever the repeated value is. So let's see if we can use that connection with the next one. So example 5 says negative 5 comma 7 is my point, and I have an undefined slope, Hannah. What does it mean when you have an undefined slope? We have a vertical line. So what do you guys think then the relationship between a vertical line is and an undefined slope? What kind of equation will this one be, Jacqueline? If horizontal is y equals, what do you think a vertical line would be? Which axis is it cutting through? So it's going to be a what kind of equation? Yeah. So whichever value is repeating, so if you look at this, this is negative 5, 0. This one is negative 5, 7. We could call this one, we'll just call this point here, negative 5, negative 4. Which one of those numbers is repeating each time, the x or the y? The x. So it's in x equals because it's repeating. So this is x equals negative 5 because that's the one that is repeating. It's very, very important that you guys just know this. Because you cannot plug an undefined slope into an equation because it's undefined. It's not really a number. You could still be able to figure it out in a zero slope situation. But for an undefined slope, you need to know it's a vertical line that's an x equals equation. All right? So what questions do you guys have so far before we get into the next examples? Okay, let's go to the next slide that says how to on it. I'm going to let you guys finish copying. And then we will finish those last three examples. All right, so we can write equation of a line if you are given any two points along the line. But if you're given any two points, you can't go directly into slope intercept form. So on all the examples we've done here so far, none of our y values, or x, x values, so we're talking about the y-intercept, right? None of our x values have been zero, right? So we haven't had the y-intercept, it's up there, in any of these cases. Do you guys see that? None of them have been zero, the x value. So that's why we haven't been able to write it into slope-intercept form right away. If you're given two points, unless one of those points is the y-intercept, you're not going to be able to write it into slope-intercept form. But you can still use point-slope form. All you first have to do is find the slope using the change in y over change in x. So make sure you're putting your y's on top and your x's on bottom. And then you can put, use one of the two points, only one of the points, and to put it into the formula y minus y1 equals m times the quantity x minus x1. All right? So once you're ready with that, we'll get into some examples here.
So on the top of this page, let's write both the point slope formula and your slope formula. So I'm going to say m equals a change in y over change in x, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, because that's going to be your first step. And your second step will be doing y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So having those on top might be helpful for you guys. <coughs> Okay, so the first thing we need to do is find the slope. How could we find the slope in this table? What could I do to find the slope in this table, Spencer? There's different ways you could do it. There's not one right way of doing it. There's multiple ways you could. So tell, tell me what you're doing. Yeah, so you're finding the change of the y values. So what's the change of the y values? 2 to negative 6 is? Eight. Minus 8, right? So what's 4 to 12? Plus 8. Spencer? Plus 8. So you do y over x. So that's negative 8 over 8, which is what, Spencer? Negative 8 divided by 8 is? Negative 1. Negative one. So then choose just one of your points. So Madison, just choose one of our points. Okay, so you chose 4, 2, Madison. Do not mix and match your points. Okay, so now we can write our equation. So Iris... What would my point slope form equation look like? What's m? Negative one, very good. Times? Perfect, very good. What questions do you guys have after that one? Because that's a little different than some of the other ones we've done. We had to add an extra step because the slope was not given to us. What questions do you guys have? So remember, and this is the hard thing, if you're given two points, you must use point-slope formula. You cannot use slope-intercept form right away unless one of those ordered pairs, which in this next case does have a y-intercept, but we're focusing on point-slope form, but unless that's the case. The other equation you could have written here is y plus 6 <coughs> equals negative 1 times x minus 12. I would accept both of those answers. All right, just so you guys are aware. You're not going to be wrong if you do that. Okay, Carly, example 7 says write the equation of a line that goes through the points 0, 2, and 2, 0. What am I going to need to do first here? Find slope. How will I find that slope? So tell me how to plug it into the equation that we have. If we want to make this one x1, y1, and this one x2, y2, okay? So tell me exactly what you're plugging in. Remember, it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So tell me exactly what you're subtracting. Tell me the numbers. Good. Good. Zero minus two. So that's y2 and y1 over x2 minus x1 is? So I get negative two over two, which is what? Carly? You only need one of the points, Hannah. So which point do you want? Again. If you would have chosen 0, 2, still correct. 
All right, Olivia, what's the point slope form equation we're going to write for this one then? the last example, what questions do you guys have for me? Yeah, Madison. Um, are you going to write that this is like Y equals <laughs> completely fine. Just don't move everything over, you know, to leave everything else the same for now. Now, like I said, Monday we will focus on changing it to slope intercept form. All right, the last example is something different. You've seen function notation before, right? But do you understand what function notation means? So who can explain what f of 2 equals negative 2 and f of 1 equals 1 even means? Who thinks they know what that means? Kelly, go ahead. Um, the f of 2, the 2 will be x, and then the negative 2 will be y. Good. So the inside is your input. The outside is your output. So you have your x and y. So you really all you have is 2 ordered pairs. There's writing ordered pairs in a different way. So Alex, what do I have to do then if I have two ordered pairs? What does that mean? What are you finding? The slope. So whenever you're given two points, the first step is to find the slope. Whenever you're given two points, the first step is to find the slope. So tell me how to find the slope with those numbers, Alex. Over. That's negative 3 over 1, which is just negative 3. So Alex did this as x1, y1, x2 y2, just so you're aware which order he did it in. Not a huge deal, it's the same thing. Jenny? Um, can you just like put it in a table? Sure, and then do like the changes, like in the value? Completely fine, yeah. Um, so after you do the slope, Alb, you have to choose a point. Which one of those points do you want to use? Two negative two or one one? So finally, we write the point slope form equation. Kaylin, write that point slope form equation for me. Have a good weekend, Madison. There you go. In parentheses, x minus 0. Good, so minus a negative becomes a positive, so you'll change that, and then you'll be done. Again, you could have used the other point as well, and you still would have had the same exact answer. All right, so go ahead and get that written down.